Hi, I'm Mike McCrory, and this is Would You Make It? In the last episode, I used a half sheet of three-quarter inch MDF to make this drill press table. And this is what's left over. So with these pieces, I have enough material left over to make a drill press fence. The first thing I'm going to do is cover the faces of each of these pieces with the leftover plastic laminate that I have. I'll do that off camera and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I'm going to put it all together. chamfer along the bottom. That way there won't be any dust that gets trapped along the edge of the fence. Let me show you what it's going to look like in the end. So this is the basic frame of the fence. It's, it's a bottom with a faceplate. This can be used all by itself if, if you choose. But what I've done is I've created removable faceplates. So here's a small one for when you're doing close work you don't want the chuck to get in the way or the fence to get in the way of the chuck. Um, so this is low enough that allows you to do that. And then when you're working with larger pieces, you can interchange that with a larger faceplate that goes here. Now, these faceplates aren't finished yet because they're going to be cut in half down the middle. That way they can be pulled out as needed. And the reason I'm doing that is because there's going to be a dust collection system at the back that will allow the dust collection port to screw onto the back and suck the dust out through the front. So you'll be able to use this interchangeable faceplate just as it looks now with the two pieces butted up together. That will close off any airflow. So the disadvantage of doing that is that you will not be able to get any dust collection However, sometimes you need that when you're dealing with very, very small pieces. You don't want any gap at the front. But you can pull it apart, and there's a, a five inch opening for the dust port. You could pull it open five inches or more, and that will allow the airflow to pull the dust in. Now, for the assembly, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is cut a rabbit along here so that the, the bottom piece and the face piece can be glued together. And then for uh, improved structure and, and rigidity, I will place a couple of blocks on each end, one, one block on each end. Along the back, I've already done some marking in pencil just to plan out exactly where I'm going to drill, where I'm going to cut. So on the back, this is where the dust port will, will attach. It will screw in, nor normally it would screw in right here. But I want to be able to make the dust port adjustable vertically so that if I'm drilling into a larger piece, I can raise the dust port up to pull in the dust from, from where the piece is being drilled. So rather than screwing it in in a fixed position, I'm going to put a couple of scrap pieces of oak here that I've pre-cut. And the, the dust port will slip in behind this and then I'll just tighten these oak pieces to the, to the flange. And then if I want to raise it up, I'll loosen these, raise it up, and then screw it back in. Normally the dust port is an inch and a half high. I'm going to cut the, the hole about two and a half inches high to give that adjustability. On the back of each of the interchangeable face plates, I'm going to put a T-slot in the end. Um, so I'll need to cut a channel for the router bit shank to go through, and then I'll use a, a T-slot bit to go through and cut. So on the back of this piece, I'll need to drill a hole in each end. Now I'm gonna use relatively small knobs, and th this is exactly three quarters of an inch from the edge of this 
to the center point of the hole. So I'm going to give it just a little bit extra. So that tells me exactly where I need to cut this slot. So I'll do that on both pieces. And then on the front of this piece, I'm also going to put a T-slot. That will be used for stop blocks. And because this face plate is larger, it will not be able to use the T-slot from this piece. So I'll cut another T-slot on the front of this face plate. Okay, so I've got my dado set installed with a sacrificial fence and I'm ready to make the first cut. I didn't have to set it very precisely because it, it's really just a simple rabbit. I'll do it in two passes so I didn't have to measure the exact width for this first pass. Okay, and I can see I need to go another eighth of an inch or so. That's perfect. Now to attach these support blocks, I'll need to remove the plastic laminate so that I can do the glue up. So I'm just going to run this through my dado blade to, to remove a thin shaving. This will be two inches from each end. All right, now I'll drill the holes for the bolts and I get to use my new drill press table for that. Now, I kind of didn't think this through because it wasn't until after I drilled the holes that I realized that I didn't need to drill these holes all the way through to attach the dust port because I'm going to use threaded inserts so that it's easy to um, insert and remove the bolts multiple times without damaging the thread in the, the MDF. So, the best way to install the threaded insert is to use a, a drill press. To hold it, I need to raise the table up. Right there. And then clamp this piece in. And then I'm going to use two hands. The, the, the benefit of doing it this way is that it ensures that the piece goes in straight, that the threaded insert goes in straight. Loosen the chuck. And it's in. Nice and straight. And then I could just use a screwdriver to adjust it, do the fine tuning. Okay, so now I need to make the channel for the T-slot router bit. Uh, I need a quarter inch channel here for the shank of the router bit. So I've got my, uh, I've got my blade set to three eighths of an inch high. So that's going to go halfway through the three quarter inch MDF. And it's a thin, thin curved blade, so I'll have to make multiple passes to get a quarter of an inch. So that's a nice, perfect quarter inch slot for the shank. All right, the next step is to cut the hole in the face for the dust board.
All right, now it's time to glue this up. Um, I've got everything handy, clamps, uh, right angles to make sure that it's perfectly square, my little blocks, glue, glue brush, so I'm all set. Okay, we'll set that in place. A little bit of glue on the blocks. Temporary clamp it just to hold things in place. All right, so we'll put the right angle in place. Now it's very important to use these, these right angles. Uh, I can see as I'm putting them on that it's not even close to 90 degrees. So this will fix that. Now I'll use a damp rag to remove some of the excess glue before we finish clamping up. Okay, that's a lot of clamps, but it's better to be safe than sorry. The last thing you want to do is not put enough clamps and then you have some of the some of the joint that's not well bonded. So we'll let that sit for a few hours and then we'll come back and do the assembly. Okay, now that we've cut the quarter inch channel for the shank for the T-slot router bit, now we can run it through the bit. Uh, I've set the fence and the T-slot router bit is 3 eighths of an inch high. So we're ready to cut. And there you can see the nice clean T-slot. Now the next thing to do is to cut the, the slot for attaching to the T-tracks the here. Now I want to be able to cut a slot rather than a hole. A lot of fences come just with a hole, but I want to be able to adjust the, the fence so that it can go on an angle. So we want to be able to go right from about here, thinking with the knob there, so we don't want to go much past that point. And I'll go all the way into where the dust port is. Can't go, can't go past the dust port, dust port. So if we go from here to here, that should give me a fair amount of travel in either direction. Okay, there's the slot. So let's start with the installation of the fence. It's, it's pretty simple. We've got these two slots. So I'll just slip those over the bolts that I've inserted into the T-track. And then screw on the knob. Oops. Screw on the knob. A little tricky to get started. And there, so it slides pretty easily. Um, 
a lot of flexibility because I can go on an angle, unlike some of the fences that just have two holes, the slots allow me to position it on an angle. For really large pieces, I can bring the fence over here, get this aligned with the track, uh, this side, and bring it way back. So if I wanted to drill into a large piece of wood like this, I've got a lot of flexibility on, on the movement. So now let's install the interchangeable faceplate. So this, this has no faceplate face on it right now. Um, and you could use it that way. But uh, I've installed a couple of nuts and knobs here. So this is the large faceplate. And this side slides on there. This side slides on here. You can close it all the way up. So this is good. Obviously the table is too high right now, but this is good for drilling into a large piece um, because it gives enough surface area to hold it vertical. Uh, you can have this completely closed. If you want some dust collection, you can open this up a little bit. Um, so again, some, some flexibility. If you want to put a stop block on it, just simply slide it into this T-slot, bring it in, clamp it down, position it where you want. Pretty self-explanatory. All right, so let's put on, let's take off the, the stop block, let's loosen the knobs, take out the high base plate. And if you're working on something small, if you're drilling something small like this, then you can put on the smaller faceplate. Same idea, slide it in, slide it in, close it if you want, open it up. So let's say I wanted to drill into a small piece like this. I've got the fence. You can see that there's no interference because of the small faceplate. There's no interference of the fence with the chuck coming down. So that's the, the reason that we have two sizes of faceplates. You can solve that another way by, by opening this up, but I think this gives even, even more solution. And then the stop block for this one, this installs a little bit differently. There's a T-track or a T-slot in the, in the fence itself at the back. Just slide this in. Tighten it up and good to go. So the only thing remaining is to install the dust port. So let's take a look at the back and, and I'll show you that. So on the back of the fence, this is where the dust port installs. Now, when I started to build this, I had ordered the dust port, but it, it had not arrived yet. Um, so the idea is that you have these two pieces of wood, you screw them in top and bottom, one over here, and then the dust port would be able to slide up and down to be uh, varied in its positioning so that if you're drilling something that's a little bit up high, the suction can be adjusted to be up high. If you're drilling down low, you can move the dust port down. So uh, I was lucky the dust port actually was delivered by mail today from Rockler. Um, it's, a, it's a really nice, it's a really nice design. This is the dust port and what makes it nice is the the connection port for the vacuum hose is offset so that it doesn't interfere with the post at the back of the at the back of the drill press. So now that I've seen it, I was actually very lucky. There was enough information on the Rockler site with the, the dimensions of this that I was able to make a few guesses about how big this was and where these slots were and I got it right. So I've got the holes in the right place. The wood fits really well, but now that I see it, I'll just show you. I don't think there's really any need to have it continuously variable in its height. I think it's a good idea to be able to move it up and down, but I don't think it needs to slide. So I'm going to change the design a little bit. I'm going to do away with these wooden pieces, and I'm going to have just three positions. One at the bottom, one all the way up at the top, and one in the middle. 
I think that'll be simpler. And then I'll just use a couple of pieces of hardboard with different sizes to put one at the top or one at the bottom, or if it's in the middle, just a small piece, one at the top and one at the bottom. So I'm gonna install two more threaded inserts right here in the middle. Uh, I'm going to cut some hardboard so that it can be screwed in top or bottom or both. And then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So there's how it looks in the lowest position with a piece of hardboard one and a half inches on the top. Here's what it looks like with a dust port positioned at the top. I've got two strips of three quarter inch MDF by one and a half inches high and that fills the gap at the bottom. And with the dust port positioned in the middle, this is what it looks like. I've got a one and a half inch by three quarter inch piece of MDF on the bottom. It doesn't even have to be bolted in, it just sits there. Um, and then there's a strip of hardboard at the top. I have to go buy a couple of more uh, quarter inch bolts that are short because I've run out, but this is gonna work well. All right, I've got everything positioned. Uh, we'll do a test drill. We'll turn the dust collection system on and we'll see how it works. No dust, drilled right through. All the dust was collected through the back. Working well. So there you have it. It's all done. We've got a a uh, drill press table, a removable round insert, um, got an adjustable fence that can go in multiple directions and on an angle with interchangeable face plates, dust collection system that works very well. That's pretty cool. So let's talk about costs. I made some notes for myself so I wouldn't forget anything. So I used about a half a sheet, well I used exactly half a sheet of MDF. Um, there were no scraps at all. I really used the full half sheet. Everything else just went up in dust. So that's about 15 bucks. The plastic laminate that I bought from Home Depot, I used less than a quarter of a sheet, I think. A sheet is about $50. So let's say I used $12 of laminate. Um, assorted bolts, T-nuts, threaded inserts, that's about $15. Um, the T-track, I bought two 48 inch pieces of T-Track from Woodcraft. Um, I didn't use the full, uh, the full amount, but I used most of it. So let's say that's about $35. Um, I bought a dust port from Rockler for $10, a piano hinge for about $8, knobs for about $10. So that's about $105, I think. And, and with taxes, that puts it up to maybe $112, $113. So not bad as long as you don't factor in the cost of labor. Labor is probably $300 on top of that, but I enjoyed doing it and I got exactly what I wanted. A lot of features that you don't see in the average fence and the average uh, drill press table. So I'm very happy with the result and I look forward to using it for a lot of different projects. So as a result of doing this project, I've got a lot of pieces. I've got the interchangeable face plates, um, I've got some clamps, some, some stop blocks. Um, I've got some of the pieces that fit in around the dust collector, depending on where it's positioned. So a piece that goes on the top, bottom, in the middle. So I, I want to make sure that I don't lose track of those. Plus, I've got my drill bit stored at the other side of the shop. So what I'm thinking is I can put um, a, a little cabinet down at the bottom of my, of my drill press. Right now, if you look down there, it's uh, just a pile of little odds and ends that I've got. So there's room to put, you know, maybe 16 inches or so to, to build a cabinet with some drawers and, and shelves so that I can store all that stuff. 
Here's some of it, but not all of it. And the way I work, I know it'll be very easy for me to misplace that kind of stuff. So that'll be one of my next projects, not my very next project. For my very next project, my neighbor across the street is retiring from the US Navy after more than 20 years of service. And he's asked me to build a shadow box coffee table for him to store some of his memorabilia medals and the sword and the US flag and whatnot. So I'm going to invite him over to build it with me. It'll be a, a learning experience for him and it'll be fun to do together. So, so stay tuned for the next episode. Ooh.